Dean Street. Um, and then right in front of me was, was the building. Um, the ground floor had just been completely devastated. Um, the whole front of the, the actual shop, or that's what I thought it was at the time, had been blown out. There was glass everywhere. You, you couldn't tell that it was a, a pub at all, really. Um, most of the chairs and tables have been literally blown apart. Uh, there was still a small fire at the back of the property. Inside, there were people lying about moaning, um, some with partial amputation of limbs, um, quite a few people with severe burns, and uh, there was an awful lot of nails. I mean, we're talking six-inch nails, so um, you could see them protruding out of people's arms, legs, faces, chests. I mean, it could have been a hardware store, to be honest, with the amount of nails that were there when that explosion went off. I was devastated because we'd, we'd released the images on, on the Thursday we were actively following lots of information that had come through and we not succeeded in arresting him before he committed his next offence. My stock in trade is terrorism, murder, rape, robbery, all these dreadful events, that's, that's what I deal with. But even I, you just couldn't take this in. You suddenly think, you know, a pub in the middle of Soho on a Friday afternoon. You're thinking, that, what sort of person is doing this? Who the hell is this person? He's gone from blacks to Asians to gays. This bomb was the most horrific. In the confined bar, two people had been killed and many more were critically injured. Among them, John Light. My mum knew he was there in London and was fairly distraught to the point where she tried to phone him over and over again on the hour, every hour. And it wasn't until the next morning that it all became, you know, apparent that John was caught up in all this. What was meant to be a happy occasion for John and his three friends had ended in tragedy. Julian Dykes was also battling for his life. Andrea Dykes, who was four months pregnant, and Nick Moore had been killed instantly. The investigation was now a murder inquiry. The bomber had struck on a Friday, not a Saturday. He'd chosen Soho's gay community, not Southall's Asian community. The pressure on the police was mounting. We were responding to uh, the, the media appeal and indeed then second, simultaneously, in actual fact, managing what was a new crime scene. And while many officers dealt with the carnage in Soho, others continued working on the new leads coming in. Among them, David Copeland. Copeland had been identified from the CCTV footage by a work colleague. At around 11.30 that Friday night, officers were sent to Hampshire to check out his last known address. We'd been out to several other addresses um, and just dealt with people who plainly weren't um, involved in the bombings at all. Originally, we were sent down to Hampshire, and this was just another bit of information. There were many other individuals that officers across England and indeed London were tasked to that evening uh, in relation to good likenesses to the image. And indeed there was no intelligence even when the research was conducted that actually made David Copeland any more likely to be the suspect. But as the officers neared Farnborough, Copeland's name was swinging ever more into the frame. Scotland Yard were telling us that they were more excited with this 
intelligence. That hadn't happened before at the other addresses I'd, I'd been to. In fact, a cab driver had called the hotline saying he'd picked up the CCTV suspect at Waterloo, the mainline station serving Farnborough. We unanimously decided to go and cold call on the address to, uh, to see who David Copeland was. Everybody knew what needed to be done. Some of us approached the door. Some officers went to the front, the side, and as best they could, the back of the address, so it was um, surrounded in effect. And then for about the next 10 minutes, we started knocking on the doors, knocking on the windows. Eventually, the door opened. The officers were told that David was living there, and they headed up the stairs to his room. It was D.I. Bersnett who knocked on the door. There was a voice from, from within saying, who is it? So we said, yes, it's the police. What do you want? Uh, we want to speak to David Copeland. What about? And I, I said, if you open the door, I'll tell you. Um, and then there seemed to be a lapse in time before the door opened, and there was a bang, there was a knock of some sort from inside the room, and the door opened. And there, standing in front of us, was David Copeland. As soon as you saw him, there was no doubt that he was the man in, in that picture. The officers quickly stepped into the room. The first thing that stood out, there was a, a big German Nazi flag on the wall, and underneath it, um, there was like a collage of, of pictures that were taken from uh, newspapers and magazines of the bombs that he'd done. Uh, there was a loaded crossbow in the corner of the room, um, one small single bed, it's quite a small room, there were some shelves and that was where the container con containing uh, um, the explosives were. There were some boxes of fireworks underneath a bed. I arrested him straight away of, uh, um, as being involved in the bombings in Brick Lane, in Soho and in Brixton. Straight away he said, yes, they're all down to me. Three nail bombs in 13 days had traumatized the capital city. But just hours after the third bomb in Soho, the police had made an arrest. David Copeland had immediately confessed to the crimes. He appeared very nervous, he was, he was shaking. Um, we asked him some questions about whether there had been other explosives in the room. He said there was a tin of something, I think it was ammonium nitrate or something, so straight away we had a crime scene which had possible um, explosives in it. Copeland was put in a forensic suit and bundled into a car back to London. Meanwhile, his home address was searched for clues. Receipts for items used in the bombs and firework powder matching the explosive lab's findings were quickly discovered. The fact that he told us that he actually had some of the bomb making kit and, and the firework powder within his room actually corroborated the fact that he was responsible for these offences. In London, Maureen Boyle's team prepared to interview Copeland. What was crucial was to identify why he'd committed the offences and what his motivation was, and to actually identify whether he had indeed acted alone or whether he had acted with other people or indeed with provocation. David Copeland was 22 years old, the middle son of an apparently ordinary family. He'd grown up in Farnborough, leaving school at 16 with only a few low-grade GCSEs. He drifted from job to job and for the previous two years had been working as an engineer's assistant on the Jubilee Line extension. Before his interview had even begun, the death toll from the Soho blast had risen. John Light had bravely hung on to life for almost 24 hours. His family had hurried from southwest England to be with him. After we had arrived, he died in front of us. It was as if, and I firmly believe, that he did hang on until he, he at least heard Mum or felt her presence.
in the police interview room, Copeland was now talking. It started off as a joke, you know, I just laughed it off. And after a period of time, I just, I just kept thinking about it. Because in the morning, before I went to bed, in the daytime, I just couldn't get it out of my head. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I woke up one morning, and they weren't thinking about it anymore. I was going to do it. My aim was political. It was to cause a racial war in this country. Right. So you would hope that by planting the bombs in Brixton and Brick Lane, there would be a backlash from the ethnic communities. Why'd you put nails in it? It means it smash windows out, stick into people, pain people, kill people. Tip can't pick this up, but whenever we, we speak to you about the gays, you have to close your eyes, and you seem to be quite intense out there. Yeah, I just don't like it.